I was getting ready to slip cast some new pots and I realized I'm about out of slip. I keep my slip in these five gallon buckets here. This is my virgin slip and this is my reclaimed slip and they're both getting close to empty. My reclaimed slip here is just above the top of the spout and the virgin slip is just a little bit taller. There's one mostly empty bucket and there's another. Mixing up slip is pretty straightforward. However, before I do that, I want to go ahead and make a few more improvements to my slip system. So I have several videos showing my slip system. Basically, it's a five gallon bucket. I drilled a hole in it. I put this rain spigot in. I've tried a couple different spigots. This one here has a larger diameter, which has worked pretty well. Not too long ago, I put on a 90 degree elbow, which has been working great. And I finally got a second one of those. So I'm going to put that on in this video. And then under here, this orange thing that you can almost see is a motorcycle lift. Basically, this lets things go up and down. And since it's meant to go for motorcycles, it can handle heavy weights. And it turns out five gallon buckets full of slip are rather heavy. I used to just lug these around or fish slip out of the top. But by using the lift, basically I can raise and lower the slip as needed. In this position, it's relatively low. I can get a drill in there and mix it up. Or I can raise it up like that. So there's plenty of space for the molds. And when I'm done and ready to pour the slip back out, I lower this back down. All right, that's great, but what are the issues? As I mentioned, these buckets are relatively heavy when they're full of slip. However, when they're empty, they actually can move around a fair bit. So this is pretty easy to spin. These are just sitting on an old board. This is like an old Ikea shelf, so I can get both buckets on top of the lift. And when I'm trying to turn the handle, which is relatively stiff, and get the slip to land in a mold, Turning it on is relatively straightforward, but I want to control being able to turn it off so I get the level just right. And between the stiff handle and it moving around, that could be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to go ahead and improve that. Well, and the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put this on as well. But that's trivial. All right, that should be good. So now both of them have a spigot. So to keep this from moving around, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and put some screws in here. If you look very closely, I already sunk a couple in here. I just picked some random screws I had laying around and basically this will just prevent it from shifting and then I put some around the spigot as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. So I just got some old screws from some old shelving or something like that. And I'm just gonna put one around each side and I'm gonna go ahead and put four in. Something like that. One over here. I'll put a couple on the back side as well. All right, so now the bucket can't really shift around back and forth, but it can still twist. So to do that, I'm going to take some longer screws and basically pin them on both sides here. All right, a couple screws around the bucket and then one on each side of the spigot. And now that moves around much less. I'm sure that could be a lot nicer, but this is definitely good enough. All right, this should be better. It's going to be now easier to move the handle because the bucket's not moving around on me when it's empty. However, this handle can be relatively stiff and it's got a very short handle here. So I think the easiest thing to do is actually to go ahead and extend the handle out so I have more to hold on to to move it back and forth. And this seems like a great job for 3D printing. So for those of you that are new with CAD and modeling things in 3D, I'll go ahead and quickly walk through how I'm going to make a handle extension for this. One of the great things about Shapecast is it completely eliminates this, but I think it is good to learn some basic skills so that once you get into 3D printing, you can actually start making your own things. And in the context of Shapecast, you can actually maybe start modifying some of the parts in ways that are interesting and useful for you. So what I want is something that slips over the top of the handle here. And the shape is a little bit irregular. The pivot point is here, and this side's a little bit longer than this side. The other thing that may not be obvious is that this actually flares out. So it's not straight down, so it has a draft angle. And if you know slip casting and undercuts, you'll know that having a draft angle makes it easier for the thing to be released. This was most likely injection molded so that the mold for the plastic part also has these considerations. So what I did first was basically measure up the top profile. So I have a pair of digital calipers here. And basically I went and measured one end. So that's, you know, 21 and a half millimeters. The other end, that's about the same. What's the total length? Total length looks like 75. Across the middle, maybe 28 and a half. And then to the center point, looks like maybe 47. And maybe 23 and a half, 24. 
So I went ahead and scribbled down a bunch of those numbers in my illegible handwriting with a rough diagram of how the handle works. So something like that. And then I jumped into the computer and started drawing things up. Let's go ahead and do that. This here is FreeCAD. It's an open source CAD program. There are lots of options out there. Fusion 360 is very common. I switched over to this one a while ago and it's actually what Shapecast is built on top of. So the first thing I wanted to do was make a sketch. This is basically a 2D profile of the top of the handle. So we can go into here and you can see there's a bunch of lines that have tiny text on them that's impossible to read. But I start with a bunch of boxes. So first there's a box around the outside. I basically took the overall width and length and made a box there. That's a construction box. I then made another one that has the narrow points. I assume these pieces came into the same size. I measured over to where the bend happens. And then I basically drew a straight line over, across, down, back over, across, and then back up. So that gave me this shape here. And of course we need to print this. And what we have in what I measured up is actually the handle itself. So we want to go outside. So I used the offset tool. So this one here, I did a 2D offset. I think I went out three millimeters and I went ahead and ran out the corners. The inside I could have modeled better, but I really just want something that again is good enough. So we don't need just wires. So the next thing I did is I turned those into faces. So there's one face and there's the other. I extruded the handle parts down. So this is actually representing the handle piece itself. And I extruded down what's going to be the 3D print. And then I basically use this as a tool to cut out the other part. So now we have a hollow cavity. I wasn't sure if I got my measurements right. So instead of extruding it this thick, the first thing I did was make it a little bit thinner. And so I made this, this here is meant to represent the handle. And then I had the extruded parts on the outside. And this only took maybe like 20 minutes to print. It was pretty quick. I just printed on draft settings. And again, I really was just trying to figure out if I got the handle shape right. So we come over the handle and it doesn't quite fit. It's a little bit loose on some sides and it's kind of rocking back and forth a little bit. So I went back into the computer and tweaked those settings a little bit. And that's how I got this shape here. The other thing is we had to deal with the taper of the handle. So in the extrudes, I actually used an angle. So I extruded this down 21 millimeters and I have a taper angle of 3.5. That basically means it's flaring out by 3.5 degrees. So if you look at it straight from the top, you can see it comes out just a little bit. And that's how I counted for the angle. I basically played around with this a couple of times to see what seemed right. And to do that, I basically measured along this point here on the end till I got the same measurement digitally and in the real world. Since I knew the top and the bottom, assuming those two aligned reasonably well, that means the angle is correct. So that was the outer piece. And I did the same thing for the piece I used to cut. It also has the same 3.5 degree taper angle. And then the last thing I did is I rounded over the corners as well, just so it's a little bit nicer to handle if I need to. And then this wouldn't be a good handle unless there's actually a handle associated with it. So I modeled up a cylinder, rounded over the end, and then fused it all together and printed this out. And then I ended up with this. I just printed this on draft settings. Again, I was just trying to make sure I got it the right size. And so we can try it out. So it's a little bit loose, so I didn't quite get all of the sizes right. And it's not sitting all the way down, it's rocking. I think it's hitting right here. This part here goes down past where it connects. And so I think I made this part too long. So let me shorten that up. I basically went in and changed these links here. The inner one didn't matter, we're just using it as a cut tool, but the outer one is the one that we're printing. And I modified the geometry for the sketch a little bit more. And then I printed it again. And so I got another one. I printed this one on the default settings. So it's a little bit higher quality. I printed it upside down. So I, this cavity here didn't need any infill and there was going to be support on the round part no matter what. So it's a little bit rough on the top, but I think it's fine. I'm going to put it on and, and it's swiggling around just a little bit, but I think this is going to be more than good enough for what I need. Trying to model something physical and get it really dialed in is hard. It takes a fair amount of work. So I was really trying to get something that's going to, going to work reasonably well. You can either spend a lot of that work up front and really dial in the shape and get the tolerances just right so that it just fits on there snug, or you can do like me and I was really going for good enough. Let me try it and iterate. I think it's because I grew up in the software world where iteration just happens over and over again. The cost for trying something out is relatively low, so you wind up trying lots and lots. And the great thing about that is you learn very quickly. That's basically the approach I took to learning ceramics itself. Or I have some engineering friends that really obsess about the details and they'll spend all that work up front and really dial things in. 
I think that can take a lot more effort up front, but if you do nail it, then it works. However, often you wind up iterating anyways. It's up to you and whatever fits your personality. So I think I could use this as is, although it is still wiggling around a little bit and I don't want to move it back and forth. So I printed a second, so I have one on each. And I have some double-sided foam tape that I think I'm gonna to use to adhere it down. That way, even though there's a little bit of wiggle room, it should not fall off. Put a little bit of tape on the top. Go ahead and squish it down. Oh yeah, and that's good. That's not gonna go anywhere. Let's do the other one. Yeah, perfect. All right, let me go ahead and test it out. I don't have enough slip to make any pots, but I can put some in a container. So let's try this new handle here. Open it up. Close it down. I found this one drips a little bit, so I can really pull on it. And this could break if I really pulled on it too hard. I just use default infill settings. Let's try the other one. It's coming out slow because I don't have much slip. But yeah, it's working just fine. And that handles great. Great, a few more simple additions to make my slip system even better. I keep looking for those. Step by step, getting better and better. So the next thing on the list before pots is to make up some new slip, but I think that'll be the next video. If you have any questions, comments, let me know, thanks.